hi everyone. Uh, my name is Maran. Uh, I am a product manager with Google Cloud, and I have been working with Apache Beam for five plus years. I've been a part of um, you know the community uh, and a lot of the kind of uh, I'd say innovations we've created over the past um, you know half a decade. And I'm really excited to kind of share you know what Apache Beam is for some of our newer audience members, but also how does Apache Beam set you up for um, kind of this new world that we live in. So, you know, uh, you know, to, to kick things off, um, I want to firstly just kind of introduce the moment, right? Um, as we all know uh, from everyone around the world, that generative AI, generative artificial intelligence, has really captured the world's imagination. New applications around text generation, image generation, um, and, uh, you know, a lot of the kind of use cases that have been kind of um, proven out by, you know, GPT-4, um, and organizations are now looking for how to turn that excitement into business results. Uh, that could mean for you know, more delightful you know, um, customer interactions, um, a, a better kind of use of their own business, you know, business performance, as well as understanding um, you know, where they're, you know, how to basically manage a, a number of different things in their own business processes. Um, and you know, right now we're still in this very kind of early Cambrian explosion period where people are starting to figure out where the use cases are. And you know, from our perspective, um, the real data that's you know the most the most valuable is data that's coming in in real time. Um, this is the data that you know is it really presents you kind of an edge that's only accessible to you. Um, it's you know it, it, you're using your kind of unique data advantages, um, and then and essentially you, combining that with AI will help you you know really kind of um, bring about a, a, a differentiated product that you know others you know might not be able to follow. Um, Secondly, um, you know, we strongly believe that um, real-time data allows you to make data-driven data decisions faster. Um, and again, you know, in this world where uh, speed and agility make a, a pretty massive difference uh, to how your business outcomes turn out, you know, this, this data is probably the most important to really leverage. And yet, from, you know, a number of different surveys, we see that only one in five companies are really really excel at maximizing the value from that data. Um, you know, there are, you know, issues around the systems themselves, you know, lagging in data processing uh, and a lot of kind of machine learning aspects of it that you need. Um, data that lives in various places from data warehouses to transactional databases um, and the, the difficulty in bringing them all together. Um, and lastly, the tooling right now are, you know, I'd say very, very disparate. Uh, tools that are built for your data applications uh, and tools that are available for your AI applications and tooling. Um, all that stuff really kind of creates this creep of new technologies that, you know, that are, are, are dealing with the various different types of, um, you know, aspects to make their particular, uh, you know, application come to life. So time and time again, when we talk to developers, when we talk to the, the organizations that they, that they take part, that they, they are part of, um, what they really want is something that's easy to use, not something that can kind of pick them up, um, you know, get them to um, pick up very, very quickly. Um, scalable, you know, the data that is, you know, at this point, data is still kind of in its infant stages, uh, but we definitely see a world in which data will become um, kind of the, um, the, the most important assets companies will have. Um, and the ability to basically scale up your platform up and down in order to kind of meet the requirements of that data volume is incredibly important. Um, and, and making sure that your platform is scalable is an important part of that particular, uh, you know, your, your technology choice. And then lastly, you know, being able to kind of um, take, you know, data and insights gleamed from your data um, and then turn that into intelligence helps you really kind of, again, drive um, you know, the, uh, the, the differential, differentiated edge that your company will have. And I wanted to, you know, again, quickly kind of survey some of the use cases that we see uh, as the most prevalent for um, real-time AI, right? Um, data that is providing sorry, applications that are, uh, you know, increase real-time visibility. So the ability to see what's going on with your systems in real time, uh, things like anomaly detection, security applications, uh, and other, uh, even real-time customer interactions. Um, secondly, real-time predictions. That's the ability to predict what's going to happen in the future. 
So that could mean recommendations to help your customers pick the best, um, pick the best, uh, you know, product page they might have, um, or the audience segmentation that'll help kind of, you know, offer create the, the, the ideal offer for your customers to leverage. Uh, and then lastly, the kind of the holy grail we call we call real time activation, right? The ability to kind of take the data in real time and turn that into kind of a, a, a you know a, a real kind of application logic um, that makes your particular you know your your business project that much more efficient or your customer interaction that much more delightful. Um, that could mean things like you know just in time alerts for inventory, um, things that things like. Uh, understanding who your customers in real time and offering them kind of the the best kind of you know user experience if it's for a website um, for if you're a manufacturing company and thinking about logistics being able to respond rapidly to you know kinks in the supply chain and all of these really are enabled by real time data plus a combination of artificial intelligence. So that brings us to Apache Beam. I see, I see a, a lot of different organizations here today, a lot of different developers, which is really, really exciting, in particular, a lot of different geographies. Um, what, what I want to do is quickly kind of lay down the foundation for what is Apache Beam? What are you going to be getting into the midst of over the next three days? And then we'll, let's kind of talk about you know, where are we going in our space that will help you kind of um, understand that this is the best technology choice you could possibly have. At the highest level, uh, Apache Beam is an open source programming model. Um, it is essentially a way for developers to express common data transformations. Um, you know, we see that, uh, you know, a lot of users um, will develop their own kind of homegrown ETL systems um, or, or will have, you know, issues with issues with um, kind of maintaining, you know, bespoke infrastructure. Um, the good thing about Apache Beam is that it is open source, right? So that is available to, um, you know, it, it's, it's a community that continues to build on the technology itself, uh, it has continued its momentum uh, since it was launched in 2017, um, and you know it, it does not provide any kind of, I'd say, um, uh, vendor lock-in issues where you're concerned about you know only really being available on one specific kind of platform. Um, we are you know year in and year out one of the most one of the top Apache projects by developer activity. Um, we offer unified batch and streaming, and I'll, and I'll speak to why that's important in the coming slides. Uh, and we offer runner and language portability. Again, I'm going to kind of wrap all these points up at the end, uh, but I wanted to kind of just level set where uh, what Apache Beam is, what are the kind of main talking points. I'm going to kind of bring them to life for you here. So Apache Beam is essentially, um, you know, our vision is to allow our developers to choose the language they prefer to press the pipeline that they need and have it executed on the right engine of choice, right? So what does that all mean? It starts off with the SDK, right? Um, you know, you have something like a sum per key, right? Like you have a, a list of very common asks for data processing. You could be filtering data. You could be, uh, you know, writing, writing mapper functions that'll make, uh, you know, uh, modifications to every every individual element. Um, you could be doing aggregations and grouping. These are all very common asks for any data processing pipeline. Um, and the Beam SDK enables all that across kind of the entire spectrum of developers. We want to allow developers to choose the language they want. Um, and so another important aspect of Apache Beam is the availability of a variety of different SDKs. We have Apache, uh, you know, we, we have uh, Java, which is kind of our, our legacy, our most, uh, you know, historically the, the, the most popular uh, SDK. We have Python, which is growing in importance, and I think. I'd say at least half of our developers nowadays are using Python. Um, we just launched the Go SDK a couple of years ago, uh, which will, again, uh, access kind of the, the benefits of Apache Beam in Go. Um, customers have the ability to also use SQL uh, so that they can basically invoke a Beam job via a SQL command. Uh, and then most recently, which is not captured here, we've also introduced a YAML SDK, right? So essentially, express your pipeline via configuration versus writing code, right? This is probably the lowest barrier of entry for our developers. And it's a very exciting time for customers to, to start kicking the tires with Beam. There'll be presentations on Beam YAML later this week, so uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, now that I've written my pipeline in the language of choice, now I want to run it, right? And, um, you know, every data processing pipeline requires 
some kind of infrastructure that it needs to run on. Um, that could be something like Google Cloud Dataflow, which is uh, a managed service on uh, you know Apache uh, managed service for Apache Beam on Google Cloud. Uh, it could be Flink or Spark. Um, you know these are available across all the clouds. Um, you know Flink um, has a managed service in a in Amazon Web Services, uh, specifically called Kinesis Data Analytics. Um, Apache Spark has um, you know various execution engines available in multi clouds and the ability to also run that on your own engine. Um, the ability to run that um, in you know on prem, uh, run that uh, on your own bespoke infrastructure, and we have a, a huge list of runners where you know uh, companies have come to use Apache Beam and realize that they want to be able to run it with their execution engine of choice, uh, and they'll choose to write that in, um, in Apache Beam and run that on a various number of runners. Uh, one of the kind of exciting benefits of Apache Beam is that um, this is not supposed to be an exhaustive list of runners. that has their own, um, you know, their own, I'd say, uh, execution engine. They have the ability to write to um, you know create their execution engine of choice um, and be able to you know uh, bring their Beam pipeline to wherever they want to run. Um, secondly, um, on the on the SDK side, customers are not limited to these options. We have developers that are building um, all kinds of SDKs. Uh, recently, I I came across um, a developer who is building a Rust SDK. Um, we've had some toy projects on building a TypeScript SDK, right? We have all the, I'd say the, the primitives, all of the kind of building blocks to allow you to build uh, your SDK of choice. And so, um, you know, I, I don't want to suggest that this is the exhaustive set of SDKs and runners. Uh, the really awesome thing about Apache Beam is that it allows you to bring your own SDK or, um, you know, build your own execution engine. So um, going back to kind of the benefits of Apache B, right? So I think that one of the most important ones is a unified API for both batch and streaming scenarios. Um, you know, a long time ago, uh, you know, developers or organizations would have to worry about building a separate stack for um, batch, uh, batch pipelines, uh, and then develop a completely different stack for streaming scenarios. Um, Apache Beam was one of the first technologies to say that hey, you don't need to worry about two separate um, SDKs. Um, you can worry, you, 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 or two different technologies. You can use the same stack with minor modifications to run uh, you know, on, on your execution engine of choice. Right? This is a very powerful idea at the time. And even today, when a lot of companies are really focused on batch processing and are struggling to think about what, which streaming scenario to, to take on, um, Apache Beam offers the ability to offer uh, both batch and streaming in one technology. Um, portability. This is again, as I mentioned before, on the on the execution engine side. Um, you know, uh, Apache Beam can run on not only you know uh, Amazon Web Services or Azure or Google Cloud. It can also run on on prem. Uh, it can run at the edge, um, and it has a number of different runner environments that allow you to actually leverage the same code in different environments. We have very powerful state and timer APIs. Uh, a lot of things we'll talk about are, are really kind of abstractions on top of these kind of bare bones primitives. But um, state and timer APIs allow you to manipulate state and timer to do basically just about any kind of logic that you could possibly imagine with your streaming pipeline, right? If you want to be able to fire a timer for a specific event coming in, right? This, the timer APIs allow for that. Um, the, you know, if you want to be able to you know, do some kind of unique counting, uh, you know, methodology for specific events. Uh, the state APIs will allow you to do that. Uh, once again, these are some of the most powerful APIs and not available in most other kind of, uh, you know, uh, data processing SDKs. Um, you have the ability to build your own execution environment with custom containers. So for our Python developers, we have Python developers that really love to bring in their own packages, whether it be, um, you know, pandas or some kind of unique tooling. Um, uh, Beam allows you to basically change the execution environment and bring your own custom containers. Uh, this again is a very powerful thing, especially for our, 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 our ML developers who require some kind of unique ML capabilities that to be packaged with their pipeline. Uh, custom containers uh, makes you allows you to be able to do that. Um, and similarly, we also have the ability to create cross-language pipelines. Um, our customers sometimes, you know, they're not monolithic. 
you know, you know, customers are, you know, organizations are not just fit, fit, only have Python developers or Java developers. They'll have kind of usually a mix of all, of all kinds of types. Um, what Beam allows you to do is actually create a cross language pipeline that can kind of package both elements uh, of a pipeline, um, both with, with different languages. Um, I'll give you a very concrete example. Let's say I'm a Python developer that has built, um, you know, a, a an ML handler that allows me to kind of manage uh, a Python ML model. Uh, but I'm a data engineer. I, my, my teammate is a data engineer who has written their pipeline in Java. Before you have to go through a painful refactoring exercise. Now you have the ability to actually uh, combine both of those in one kind of execution with cross language transformations. And then lastly, kind of. Uh, you know the the capabilities around windowing, triggers, and sessionization, right? Like these are some of the most common things we see across, um, if, you know, a data processing use cases. Um, the ability to kind of fire your windows at a particular moment, like you know, if I want to collect it every minute, every hour, whatever that might be. Uh, I want to have you know specific control over my triggering logic, right? So that means how do I deal with late data uh, is a very important question that many of our customers are asking. And then lastly, sessionization, right? This is a, again, a, 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 a neat little convenience that we provided through Apache Beam that allows you to do something that's very common um, in, in these winning scenarios. So in summary, um, you know, Apache Beam uh, is, is a truly universal API that provides, you know, both an API for batch, both batch and streaming in one. Two, um, it's, a, it's developer friendly. It allows you to kind of, you know, use the SDK of your choice uh, to basically drive your own kind of uh, Beam pipelines. And then lastly, portable, right? The ability to run your Beam pipelines on any of your uh, you know, execution engines, whether that be across multiple clouds, uh, on-premises, uh, or on the edge. So now that we've kind of talked about what Apache Beam is and you know, what, what we are uh, seeking to solve for Apache Beam in general, where are we going, right? And I think a lot of this is really around what do we see, um, you know, where do we see things things evolving? And, you know, one of the things I already mentioned before at the top of this this this, this presentation is we are growing uh, into a world with more and more generative AI applications. Uh, we are living in a world of intelligence. We are living where, you know, our devices or our wearables or our, our laptops know more of the context is happening around you. And that alone will create, a, you know, a, a one a better experience for customers, but two, a new opportunity for companies to really kind of differentiate their product offerings. And we've talked a little bit about, you know, um, being primitives, right? We talked about how you could write, you know, things like um, combiners, do funds, group by keys, uh, a lot of these kind of very cool, very specific types of. Um, beam, the, the beam primitives that allow you to basically build any pipeline that you possibly want. But as cool as they are, um, we are Apache Beam has been introducing the idea of a turnkey transformation. Right uh, today, Apache Beam gives you the building blocks, um, and in the future, we plan to give you at least a a slightly higher level abstraction for that. Uh, we want it so that it, it's particularly a lot easier to basically. Um, you know, you know, basically do a very common pattern without having to write a lot of boilerplate code. What does that look like? So, you know, you might have a pipeline that is, you know, uh, reading some kind of <coughs> reading from some kind of file. Um, it is, uh, you know, <coughs> reading matches and then pre-processing those stage those images. But now you want to be able to do some kind of uh, some kind of pattern. Um, and as a way to introduce this, let's talk about the uh, ML inference pattern, right? Um, if I am producing, if I'm producing predictions for my particular, you know, ML from a model, think about all the things I need to think about when it comes to predictionizing that data. I have to think about efficiently sharing that model across multiple endpoints. I have to think about how do I deal with errors and dead letter queues in case you know I get results that are not, you know, not well formed. Um, I get a set of metrics. I, I need metrics for observability. I need to see what's happening with my pipeline. Um, I have to think about, you know, uh, how do I configure and how do I think about updating my models? Now, once again, all these things are not very straightforward. And in, in reality, thinking about all these things could take, you know, potentially, you know, thousands of lines of code. Well, with 
our <coughs> with the Patrick Williams run inference, you can now call streaming traces in one line of code, right? That that highlighted <coughs> that highlighted um, you know line right there shows uh, something we call run inference, right? The ability to essentially specify a model and some properties associated with that model to uh, basically call a prediction uh, by your 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 beam pipeline. Um, that's just a, a radical idea that eliminates a lot of the kind of boilerplate as we go back to the last slide, a lot of the things you think about for productionization. And um, once again, we are in the process of building more turnkey transformations as part of Apache Beam to make ML even easier than ever. Let's take enrichment, right? Um, I have a pipeline that is reading uh, you know, a, a sequence of events, uh, streaming events, and I wanna augment that data um, with you know some kind of lookup table. So let's take uh, I'm I'm reading a, a a stream of a click stream data, and I want to be able to augment it with some kind of historical pattern. Um, I might be reading you know uh, a data from devices, um, like and I want to be able to identify some kind of anomaly um, that's maybe stored in you know the the lookups stored in another table. And then lastly, you know like let's take a financial services example. Uh, I wanted to take you know the kind of incoming market data, and I want to match it with, you know, historic information around to build real-time indices. Well, with, with, with Beam, we allow for, uh, we, we, we now create enrich, enrichment, right? Um, the ability to kind of enrich your, your, your pipelines with one, you know, basically one line of code, right? Um, once again, thinking about what we're doing here, we're taking, you know, thousands of lines of code and pulling it up to one particular kind of transformation. Um, we are. We have been doing this for other pieces of the ML workflow, things like ML Transform for pre-processing, um, and we'll be doing some new bits around feature engineering in the future. But once again, like you know, I think there are uh, there's a, a lot of reason to be excited for what's happening in Apache Beam. And as a developer who might be new to this particular technology, I, I want to encourage you to think that this is a this is still a growing project. Uh, you know, we we certainly love people using it, but not even more so people that are helping contribute. Um, and our direction right now is how do we make it easier, in particular for ML use cases, right? Like how do I how do I equip a, a team of developers to create a ML application within hours and not months?